<laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> We got a really slow countdown this morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Isn't It Time Facebook Live show today. I'm your host, Sally Thibault. Today we're talking about the next two steps in creating the manifestation and making your intentions real for 2019. And the two steps we're talking about today are the ones that you are, where you'll find um, the, the sabotage hits. Um, so we're going to go through that today as well. So good morning, Donna. Yes, a little bit cooler this morning or maybe they'll just the wind's a little bit cooler. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? It's been really buggy, <clears throat> driving me crazy. I don't know whether it's maybe Facebook's kind of forcing people to get use their platform only. Good morning, everybody. As you hop on this morning, please say hello. Let me know where you are, where it's like in your neck of the woods today. As I said, it's just that little bit cooler down here um, by the beach. Um, just a little bit um, uh, 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 southeasterly wind blowing this morning. So that's a bit nice. The sunrise this morning was spectacular. Good morning, Trish. Listening is prepared for your Vision Water EFT workshop. Yay! <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. Yes, today is a big day for me too. It's my... Uh, EFT workshop here today, EFT for Leaders. Good morning, Janet. Yes, the EFT for Leaders and Coaches program uh, um, seminar today. So I am looking for where, um, so I'm really kind of pumping this morning, been up, been my walk, done my meditation, um, and uh, written in my journal and achieving some pretty awesome goals today. Just to let you guys in on a little secret, I, um, uh, I have decided to set myself a goal, putting it out there, um, to be able to do a full headstand, you know, like a full headstand, unsupported headstand uh, by my birthday this year, which is in August. Um, and I decided on Monday and this morning I actually got up. I'm still up a little bit against the wall, but I managed to pull myself up where for about five, maybe five and a bit seconds. <laughs> I managed to hold it. So I'm pretty darn excited about that. That was a goal I set actually on your Monday. And so uh, I've been doing it every morning. And this morning it was like you could hear the hoop and holler from the living room. Yes, I did it. <laughs> a little bit. And a bit sloppy, but that's my goal. That's my goal. Unsupported headstand by my birthday this year. So just putting that out there, there, guys. And that's uh, – and so I think it's really important to continually set um, goals for yourself. Um, and, and for me, um, you know, setting really good body goals, you know, which, uh, fitness, physical fitness goals is really important to me because I can get a bit lackadaisical. So that's my goal and, uh, and we're working towards it. But uh, it felt really good this morning to actually get up. I'm still, as I said, against the wall, but to move myself back off and just hold straight for maybe five and a half seconds. <laughs> that's cool. Let me know if you've got a goal that you're, um, or an intention that you've set this year that you really would like to achieve something that's that's just really special to you um and and it's interesting isn't it i'm reading a wonderful book at the moment and i will share this out um for you the 5 a.m club robin sharma loving it loving it's on my um on my audible book and that's what he talks about is continually setting yourself these goals so once you reach a certain plateau you go to the next level so i'd love to hear what if you're setting yourself some some you know challenging goals this year that you'd like to achieve. Radio. so let's get back to this eight-step uh, eight, uh, step implementation or manifestation process. This is the one uh, that we used last year, I've been refining it over the last, well, you know, numerous years, but th this is what really worked for us last year um, to manifest this beautiful apartment by the ocean, to um, have that spectacular trip um to, um, to Canada and everything that happened and, of course, my best year in business last year. So these are the things I want to share with you. Um, I'm just going to pop that up. Um, yeah. Oh, I love Michelle Obama's book. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't that interesting? Um, uh, that's true, Donna, that um, I want to do that too. That's um, I'm setting myself reading and listening. So um, I loved Michelle Obama's books. Anybody else read it? It was, oh, I just loved it. I, I loved, I loved, 
and because I, I listened to it, so it's like she was in my ear the whole time. It was really good, actually, um, to hear her side of the story and, and how, you know, it wasn't exactly what she wanted, but she supported her husband, and, and that's the way it works, as we all do sometimes. <laughs> Let me know, too, if you're reading a good book this year and can share. But, yeah, I loved I loved it. I actually gave it to everybody for Christmas this year, and, um, yeah, I loved it. All right, let's talk about that first. So the first two we talked about last week, and this eight-step manifestation process. One was make a decision. Um, the second one was uh, create the vision. So once you've made the decision and create the vision, yes, yeah, she was, Donna, wasn't she? So real and down to earth. The next step, step number three, is the plan the implementation. Now, this is where I feel many people get unstuck it's but because when you when you're planning the implementation for this process things have to change you cannot implement a new habit unless you get rid of an old habit now here's what happens with habits we get used to them they become comfortable um you know, the cup of coffee first thing in the morning. It's a comfortable habit, something we reach and often do the first I mean, I don't drink coffee, but I know my husband does. That's what he looks for is the cup of coffee in the morning. He's now stretching it out to about 9 o'clock before he has his first cup. Um, whatever we do around those habits becomes comfortable. Now, when we've got a busy world that we live in, busy life, when you're got so much on in your mind to change a habit requires energy you have to think about it now your brain doesn't like that especially if you're busy it's, you know you get those oh, I can't even think right now feeling oh, I've got too much on I can't think when you're trying to change a habit it requires sitting down and asking yourself what do I need to change in order to implement this new habit. You can't just set an intention to do something and then expect it to do it and stick with it if something hasn't changed. Now, this is, as I mentioned before, where self-sabotage kicks in because when you're, you require the change, change is difficult. We don't like change. I don't know if any of you saw um, the comments coming from, you know, for those here in Australia, the Today Show team have changed. So they've gotten uh, uh, rid of one, a number of people off who were regulars on the show and they've brought in new people. Well, the vitriol and the nasty comments and that I'm not watching this anymore because I really liked him. What's happened in there is that people don't like change. They get comfortable, even though... Um, the the presenter they had on was, you know, pushing the boundaries a little bit and, you know, not as popular and the ratings were dropping. People don't like change and so they get angry about it. So that's what happens when we're trying to implement change. You'll get sort of antsy about it, you know, like it's like you get all motivated first, motivated and inspired first, then it gets hard. So planning the implementation is really important. So, for instance... If you want to lose weight, for instance, if that's been an implement, is that if that's an intention for this year, what habit are you going to change? What are you going to change and implement so you can what I like to call swap out? So, um, for instance, if you've decided you want to lose weight and you're going to go for a walk every morning, what does that look like the day before? So you're going for a walk from me and I've got to get up, say, half an hour earlier to go for a walk. What, what does that mean you need to change the day before? Does that mean you need to go to bed half an hour earlier? Does that mean you eat, need to eat um, dinner earlier so that you're not um, still digesting food and can't sleep? Does that mean you need to switch your all your screens off a half an hour earlier? It's like going back all the time and looking at how you're going to plan the implementation. The second part of that is how does it fit into your family life? So if you're going to, let's use the analogy of losing weight again. If you're going to lose weight and you're going to you know, increase your exercise, what does that look like? If you've got young children, how does that implement in the family? You've got to bring someone on board with you to support it. 
um, wh- who's going to look pick the kids up? Who's going to who's going to get the kids up? I mean, who's going to create breakfast? Who's going to clean the kitchen? Who's going to get the kids ready for school? Those are the things that need to be planned. Now, in a relationship, it's really important because whether you've got children or not, when you're implementing a new change, you, you really do need somebody to just go, you know what, it's okay, I can support you. I can help you. This is what I'll do to support you. So in my world, I'm a, I'm a very early riser. So I, I like to get up about, I, I wake up usually about 4, 4.15, and I like to get everything done sitting at my desk by 8 o'clock at the latest in the morning. So I... I get up, do my meditation, do, 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 tapping, workout, stretch, blah, 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 now headstand. <laughs> um, then I do breakfast. That's my role. And so at night when I'm tired, I'm very fortunate to have a husband who cooks, but he he cooks and cleans the kitchen. That's the trade-off we've made. I do breakfast, he does dinner, I do the laundry, he does the cleaning up. That's what you've got to, got to figure this out. So... When you're planning the implementation, look at it strategically as if you were like a military planning, like you're a general. Plan the implementation. How are you going to do that? Um, yeah, I love the 4 a.m. club. Me too, Don. I love that. I was just only thinking this morning when I was walking, okay, as the you start to see a little bit of the change in the sun now, coming up just that, you know, a couple of minutes later. And I'm thinking to myself already, okay, what am I going to do in the, you know, sort of, April, May, as it gets dark, how am I going to change here? I don't particularly like to walk around the area I'm at when it's dark. So how am I going to, I'm already thinking about what do I need to do? Anyway, so um, how does this fit into your work? So um, if you want to, to, to lo- let's lose the lose weight analogy again, are you going to take lunch to work? And what does that look like? If today we're, um, we're doing the seminar and so I get up early in the morning and make mason jar salads for, for Jerry and I. Um, so they're ready and pull them out. And we used to in the past, and I was only thinking this morning when I was making them, I'm going to start doing this again. We used to make them on a Sunday and they last four or five days in the fridge. And we we'll start doing that again because it's really cool. Mason jar salads, it just you pull it out and it's ready to go at lunchtime. So how is it going to work for you? If you've got an intention to increase your business, you increase the bottom line in your business. What needs to change in your business in order for you to do that? How many more calls do you need to make um, to increase um, your sales? What does that look like? What, strategically, how are you looking at your marketing? So, and what are you going to do daily in order to do that? So, it's kind of got to, everything's got to have a plan. One of the things I did many years ago, uh, which was a huge benefit. Huge, huge, huge benefit, and I can't emphasize this. I do this with my clients a lot. Is you is you track your time for two weeks. So everything that you do from the time you wake up in the morning till the time you go to bed, you actually I, you did in, in half hour things from you know four thirty or five o'clock in the morning down to whatever time you go to bed at night, and you'll be really surprised. What I found when I did that was that I found where my high points of energy were during the day and where my low points were. And so I was able to switch what I was doing. So net, but so for me, and I know many of you on the call who are early risers, you're obviously early risers because you're on the call. <laughs> um, my low point of energy in the day is about midday, midday till 2 or 3 o'clock. I'm not thinking clearly, you know. So uh, in that time period, I do kind of, menial work, you know, like um, it might be, um, you know, say posting social media. Um, yeah, that's exactly right, Donna. Oh, where is this guy? Yeah. So, yeah, amazing how much time you've left or wasted a day. Oh, so true, isn't it? Yeah, so I found where my high points and low points. So my high point in the day is 7 a.m. till 11 a.m. I am, so I'm not going to waste my time from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. doing menial things, you know, things that don't require a lot of thinking. That's my creativity and my productivity time. That's when I'm thinking. That's when I'm doing my writing. Um, that's when I um, start, so if I'm strategically planning. I love early morning calls with my clients because I'm really on. I'm really switched on. I don't do night times because I, I can't. I'm a bit brain dead. 
<laughs> I'm getting up four o'clock in the morning, I'm already dead. Um, so that's what I do. So finding your time, finding where you are, um, your best time is. Right, that's plan the implementation. Number four in this process is commit to action. The, this is the thing that I find for many people is really difficult. It's this committing to action. Um, it's, why is this not showing? Sorry, guys, it's just something's not working at the moment, and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Oh, my God, just keep on going, Sally. All right, commit to action. Commit to action. Yes. Now, I've mentioned this over and over again, a bit like a broken record. 66 days it's going to take you to change a habit. That's how long it's going to take. Now, what I found, and I saw this over and over again, is um, the what happens is that your the first part of that, 21 days, first three weeks, hard. First three weeks, hard. This is where, as I mentioned before, self-sabotage kicks in, procrastination kicks in, self-doubt kicks in. This is where the imposter syndrome shows up. This is where you start to doubt and to fear. It's in these first three weeks, the 21 days, because your brain, as I mentioned earlier on the show, the brain doesn't like change. It's going to be operating to get you to go back to old habits because it's exhausting to change. And if you're busy and if you are trying to implement a new change, willpower goes down when you're tired. You know yourself, if you're tired and your brain's tired, you go, oh, I just can't think right now. Like, I'll just, I'll just do it the way I've always done it. You know, we naturally go to it. That's a physiological thing that actually happens in the brain. So the first 21 days of implementing a New intention is going to be hard. All you have to rely on is willpower at that point in time and tapping, of course, which makes it a whole heap easier. The second part of the commit to action, in the middle, you start to get a bit, oh, I don't know if I really can stick to this. This is where your self-doubt, as I said, start to come up. It's, but you're starting, to feel, you're starting to feel a bit better, but it's a bit messy. You know, it's a bit... Ooh, I don't know if I'm really doing this. Uh, you know, I don't know if I can do this all the time. You start, that's the questions. And then the last one, the last 21 days, that's when it starts to take off. It starts to feel a bit better. And that's what you need to get to. It's the 66-day mark. About nine weeks, I like to push it out to about three months. If you're setting an intention in January, we're still in January, believe it or not. You want to be pushing yourself out to the 31st of March. That's when you're going to change this habit or change this. But from January to March, we're very lucky in this country, it's it's summer. So you know, January to March, it's probably easier to stick to kind of health and wellness and productivity habits a bit more because it's lighter and brighter and all that stuff. But 31st of March, that's where you want to look at, okay, what have I achieved? Now, I've got a new workshop coming up on the 23rd of February. The link is up there. It's Make Your Intentions Real this year. We're going to be doing dealing with the three biggest challenges most women face in making their intentions real. We're going to look at self-doubt. We're going to look where it comes from. We're going to look at self-sabotage. Where are you sabotaging your efforts and why? I want to get underneath the why because that's really important. It's the messy part that we're going to, if you've got that January intention and you're going to the end of March, you, this is this workshop's going to be right in the middle of the messy part. <laughs> this is where you want to be using EFT and you want to be using visualising, pulling all these things into practice. So that's on the 23rd of, um, of um, oh, the wind's just picked up. That's on the 23rd. I'm just going to pop it in the, in the comments here. Um, that's on the 23rd of February here on the Gold Coast. It's, um, where am I going? Um, it's a, I'm just trying to put this in the link. Let's see if it, let's see if it works. Yay, it's working. Yay. Fingers crossed today, I tell you. <laughs> 
Yes, showed up. Good, good, good. Oh, it's got a three in front of it. Oh, really, Sally? Good grief. And I can't fix it here. I'll fix it afterwards. I'll fix it afterwards. Um, so when it comes up on the um, – why has it got a three in front of it? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, Lordy, Lord. All right. So commit to action, 66 days. Rightio, this is where it's going. Let me know if this is making sense for you guys. Is it? Is this Is this kind of ringing true for you, um, making sense? Uh, as I said, I'm having a little bit of technical trouble today. Did that door just blow open? Or did you too? <laughs> Lucky there's nothing there. <laughs> All right. So um, plan the implementation, commit to action. Let me know. How are you going? Are you doing this right now? Uh, is it working for you right now? Um, where are your sticking points coming from? Let me know. So, and I'd love to see you on the 23rd of February if you are able to come here. Totally makes sense. Thank you, Donna. Good. Good, good, good. Does make sense. Does make sense. I, um, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, I realised this morning when I woke up, it is, it is now such a habit for me. I don't even have to think about it. Um, hey, Deirdre. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Someone's ringing my doorbell already. I don't know where my husband is. Hold on, I'm just going to close the door. Just a sec. And who's ringing the doorbell? <laughs> Somebody's arrived early for the weather seminar. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Good thing I've got a great logistics person. Great, 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 great. All right, let's do a tapping um, to finish off this morning. So um, what I want you to do is to pick a um, pick a something you want to achieve, something you want to achieve, um, and I want you to measure it on a scale of 1 to 10. Um how, what is your level of belief that you can actually achieve this? Anything, doesn't matter what it is. Think in mind too, you know, what, what's, the, what's the habit that you most need to change, do you think? What is it that you most need to change in your life? Good morning, Josie. Good morning. What do you, need, what do you most need to change, do you think, to create it? Let's tap around some of the, some of the um, issues that you might have. Um, the blocks that you might have in order to do that. Um, resistance. Let's use the word resistance, Shannon. That just kind of popped into me. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Let's use the word resistance. All right, let's tap. Looking at that, in, that intention. Even though looking at this intention I have some resistance to implementing a new habit. I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Even though I can feel this measure of resistance, I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Even though I have this level of resistance to implementing a new habit, I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Okay, tapping. This resistance, my resistance, this resistance. Implementing a new habit's hard. My resistance. This resistance. This level of resistance. Not sure where it comes from. My resistance. Changing habits is hard. This resistance, all this resistance, what do I have to change in order to do this? My resistance, this resistance, feeling this resistance. Okay, take a deep breath 
and let it go. Now, it would be really interesting to think about back to the times where you've gone to achieve something in the past and you've pulled away. Remember, that's just a habit, a habit of just kind of pulling away and not doing it. You know, maybe you said you were going to lose weight last year and you didn't get there or you put it all back on again. Or maybe you said you were going to, you know, bring on five new clients last year and, you're, and you kind of fell apart in the heap. Maybe you said last year you were going to post on social media five days a week and you just lost the plot, whatever it is. Go back to that. See if you can find that time when you gave up and try and look at what was going on in my life at the time. Was I really busy? Like was I really overwhelmed or was the doubt rising for me? See if you can find the pattern because you'll find that pattern through there. All right, let's do a quick reframe round. Remember, normally I wouldn't do this till that level of resistance was like a zero. You know, it's like, oh, gee, I think I can do this. Okay, tap it. Even though. I had this level of resistance before. I choose to use my willpower. Even though I've resisted this before, I know change is kind of messy in the middle, but I choose to power through it. Even though in the past, that resistance has stopped me. I choose this time to make my intentions real this year. Tapping. I choose to make my intentions real this year. I choose to release the resistance. I choose to trust. I choose to know this is going to be messy in the middle, but I'm going to do it anyway. I trust in this process. I give myself permission to use my willpower. I'm going to trust in this process. Okay, and just take a deep breath. <sighs> Let it go. All right, let me know how you go. Remember, we've got the workshop coming up on 23rd of February. If you are on the Gold Coast, I'd love to see you. Uh, if not, and you were, you're kind of struggling at the moment and you'd like some help, you know, I'm always booking for a, a chat with me. I'd love to talk with you. And uh, in the meantime, <laughs> the ghost is back. <laughs> it's just the wind, actually. I just win. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, everybody, and uh, I shall speak to you next week when we'll talk about the two next strategies in the eight-step implementation process. And let me help you make your intentions real for 2019. Have an awesome weekend, everybody, and I'll talk with you soon. Bye for now.